Okay, and we are recording this session and we are live. With that said, uh, I would like to welcome everybody to today's webinar presentation entitled Yield Packer Enterprise Software's Bespoke UI Localization Process. Uriel, if you want to click to the next slide, please. I still see the uh, the main slide real. There we go. All right. So I'm uh, through, my name is Chris Ralph. I'm with Boulder SEO Marketing. I help facilitate these uh, webinars. Super excited to have with us uh, Uriel Lustig of uh, HP, Hank Boxma, an independent localization consultant, and David Sommer of NetTranslators. Why don't you guys introduce yourself, starting uh, Uriel, if you want to say a few words about yourself, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Uriel, and I'm working for within HP and lately in HPE uh, uh, more than 10 years, most of them in the globalization domain. Excellent. Thank you. Hank? Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Hank Boxma from the Netherlands. Um, I have an engineering background and working for a long time in software localization and I'm helping my clients uh, to optimize their uh, localization processes and we also developed uh, a localization technology ourselves, visual localization technology called Rigi, which we will present today in this webinar. Awesome. And then David, uh, NetTranslators uh, hosts these webinars on a regular basis. Uh, please introduce yourself. Yes, I'm David Summer. I'm the Director of Strategic Operations here at NetTranslators, uh, an international LSP. I've been uh, in the localization business for about a dozen years now, uh, and I've spent that entire time here at NetTranslators. Excellent. And I right. hearty welcome to everyone. <laughs> Why don't we, a lot of interest in this session. It's a packed webinar, and I'd love to have a little bit of time at the end for Q&A. Let's get started, and then we'll do, uh, David, uh, I'll do a couple of polls um, after your first slide, maybe. All right, let's get started. Okay, so um, we have a lot of material today to cover, and I'm just going to take out uh, a minute or two of everyone's time uh, because I, at this point, we don't know what everybody, what the background of everybody who's attending today. So I just wanted to also emphasize um, what's unusual about what we're presenting today. So the the way to uh, emphasize what's unusual about it is just to talk about the typical UI localization process. Um, so the first step, as, uh, as most people probably know, is to handle the internationalization issues. Um, so those things could be, you know, ability to display or print the text, support for complex fonts, ability to manipulate the text, uh, the sorting issues, uh, the ability to enter text, uh, displaying input, uh, defining days of week, hours, currencies, and so on and so forth. All this is uh, before any sort of translation will take place. Uh, once you've got all the international issues, uh, internationalization issues out of the way, uh, you will create a localization infrastructure, and these things, uh, the, the infrastructure would be to gather all your assets um, around the uh, the uh, localization process, and that those would be uh, terminology databases, glossaries, style guides, training, identifying the the correct. Uh, um, resources, translators, testers, so on and so forth. Then the next step would be uh, string translation, TEP, what we uh, here in the industry call TEP, translation, editing, and proofreading. And I'll just mention that one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, challenges in string translation is that most of it is done out of context, and we'll talk a lot about that, I'm sure, uh, soon. Um, the, after the TEP process, there's the build, and then we perform various testing for linguistic, functional, and cosmetic issues. And, and these would be uh, uh, 
things that came about because of the out of context way in which the strings were translated. Uh, we would go through a series of fixes, uh, a verification so cycle, perhaps you'd need some screenshots for your uh, documentation, uh, your asset updates, and if that would be uh, translation memories, perhaps you want to uh, address some uh, terminology issues that came up during the uh, localization. Uh, if you're working with uh, tools, uh, you might want to update the uh, the bundles at that point because if you make a change during the uh, testing phase, you have to make sure it's reflected in the uh, in, in all of the assets, not just the translation memory. Uh, and then you would have the finalization, and and that really on one on one foot is what we would look at um, for the typical UI localization process. Um, now I'm going to let Uriel continue um, and he'll, he'll explain, I think, uh, and address many of these issues um, with, uh, with the uh, solution that they built. Awesome. Why don't we, uh, let's take a couple of polls here. So I'd like to know, are you on the vendor or customer side or consultant or other? I'm gonna launch the poll here. Um, if everybody could please take a second here, quickly indicate um, um, where what you do or how you're involved in localization here. And we'll probably give it another maybe five seconds. Uh, we get about six, 70 percent of all votes in. All right, let's give it another three two and one i'm going to close the poll and um, i'm going to share the results oh and it just went away let me see so we had in case you cannot see the results 13 percent on the vendor side 46 on the customer side 11 percent uh, on the consultant side 30 percent other and i think we had about 145 people signed up. Um, all right, Uriel, that's it. Why don't you take over from, actually, let's do one more poll, just real quick. How would you rate your software localization expertise? Um, beginner, intermediate, advanced, heck, I'm a pro, I should be hosting this webinar and not sure. This way, I think we'll know a little bit more about the audience and um, how to walk through this presentation. We'll give it another five to six seconds. And David, what do you think? Well, what's who's what's the majority? I, I I'm going to guess that most people are advanced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we looked at the registration list, and we have some. Some pros here, absolutely. So uh, we'll kind of three, two, one. I'm gonna close this poll. I'm gonna share. Oops, and it disappeared again. Here are the results: eleven percent beginner, twenty-seven intermediate, uh, fifty forty-nine advanced, eleven pro, and two are not sure. All right, that's it. Uh, Uriel, it's all yours. Okay, hi everyone again. In today's session, I'm going to describe to some level our globalization working model in HPE. And I'm going to put uh, the, the focus, not about the whole process, but the way we did and the improvement we did along the last three years. I'm going to focus more about two of the issues. One of them is translation in context. And the other one is a regard our QA working model. So let's start. So in general, I believe that many of you are uh, familiar with HP. Or in last year, we se separated HP into two, two, two different companies, HPE and HPE Inc. And the software is remain part of, will become part of HPE. We have several software division about security, big data, life cycle management, operation management, and so on. We have a central globalization team that serve many of the product units. And the services we are delivering is around uh, uh, translation, localization, testing, whether it's the software itself and documentation, and in addition, uh, marketing asset, 
and so on. Overall, we are quite a big group of 70 engineers, including project managers, a QA, and some development. As I, as I will start out, we are releasing something like 120 releases per a year, and we have different kind of releases, major, minor, minor, minors, but all of them are releasing simultaneous shipment of the English together with the non-English together. We are supporting up to 20 different languages, and again, it depends on the nature of the product. And the working model, as in, in many of the in industry, they are using Agile. So you can imagine the challenges we have, talking about the high number of drops, short term around, around, around the, the, the iterations, and make sure that we are, and we are aligned with the English MR. Definitely not an easy. So, looking at us uh, three years ago, we still we already have been a, a central organization or group, and we served many of the HP software uh, organization and product unit. And in that way, we were very very powerful. We had our own budget for our own activities, and we have the ability to do a lot of things. Saying that, if I'm looking in all aspects in regard to our working model and our efficiency, we did it, we did and we delivered a lot of things, but in the same times, we, to so many, many level, were not efficient. The working model was very manual driven. It's starting from the manual uh, uh, file processing and, and, and continue with the testing, which is, was pure manual testing. No use of machine translation, and everything was translated by human. We were not always business alignment with the needs, and we are not always aware of that. The budget management was always over using Excel, and I believe many of the companies are still using. So in the next few slides, I would like to put some some focus about a few activities that we did, and later on we drill, we drill down to, to the, the dedicated issues. So talking about the translation process it, itself, although we are not using any TMS system, we were able to address our manual activities. We are using today SDL or Solo as our tools, which is standalone tools. It's not workflow mechanism. And on top of that, we build our in-house tools. We are call it Easy LTNN that allow allow you to define your own workflow, and you can configure what kind of task you would like to do in every workflow. And it can start from directly from the source control of the product, you can update all the resources, you can create pseudo translation, you can even create uh, the whole bundle from translation, updated with whatever needed, and done all that in one click, generate the bundle, send it to the vendors, include uh, 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 the budget aspect as well. We are not using today the TMS because we found, found out that any commercial TMS uh, as it is, or at least as, as much as we investigate it, does not support our needs in order to support everything starting from the source control itself. Uh, 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 once you need to upload everything to the system manually and cause you too much, too much effort, we would like to avoid. We are still looking in the TMS area, and we are planning to, to improve here even more. Looking about the, uh, uh, our quality, well, today we are able to define, at least for ourselves, what is our uh, uh, qualities. We have clear measurement, 
KPI both in aspect of functionalities and about linguistic. And we can take for, again, it's, for every product, it's, it's quality per language, it's a specific timeline, and, and uh, uh, show it to the management and to ourselves when we need some improvement. Talking about machine translation, we don't have it everywhere today, but at least our documentation is today being handled by machine translation. And we are taking it, the, the decision about a, a machine translation per a language. For some languages, like French, Spanish, and so on, it's quite easy, and the support you can get there is qu quite good. While some other languages, like Chinese or Japanese, is more challenging. So we get into that manually. We are supporting Chinese as well, and we are looking into Japanese those days as well. We started with documentation, and we are gradually getting into the, the application UI domain with machine translation as well, and we are seeing a, 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 good process, a good process from that. Um, we are seeing process improvement in both aspects of the cost of saving and efficiency in a matter of time. Although I can tell you, for, at least from our perspective, saving of the cost was our major improvement we looked for. We created internally kind of customer success program to, in order to collect some feedback from our customer, how they see our product. It's starting from functional uh, 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 of our application, but mostly in our domain from INT net perspective and localization. We would like to make, to make sure that our terminology is aligned with the expectation. And sometimes we are getting uh, feedbacks where some improvement is needed, and this is helping us a lot to be to improve. Sometimes we are getting requirement about what kind of material is needed for the, our customers uh, to be translated, and that program helping us a lot. It's not always easy to get uh, customers, but whenever we get it, it's beneficial. And we built an in-house kind of BI system to allow us to, to be more business alignment. As always, the budget sometimes is uh, uh, limited in order to make sure where, in which product, in which market, it was it worth was, and to invest more in localization, to translate more material, and in which market we can save some of the investment and we don't see much return of those investments. Our system automatically can show us once we have more money, where we should invest and where we should save cost if needed. And we build a budget management system that by end of the quarter, we don't need to go over a lot of Excel files and calculate how and summarize how was our spending over the last quarter and what should be our forecast for the next quarters using a system that we built internally. All those efforts, we did a lot, a lot of investment. We are doing it much easier. And you can imagine that in, in organization like HPE, with all the processes around finance, those kind of systems, very helpful. So again, this is a, a, a few topics that we improved along a, 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 the last three years. And I would like to put some effort in, in, in the next minute, about two hours, big topic in, in, in more deep level. So the first topic is translation in context. And very sh short example why we need What's the importance of the context? Look at this example. What is the term second? When you send to translation and bundle, a textual bundle, where no one sees the context, 
even the, if, if the, the translator do familiar with the applications, with the overall con context of application, when he see a term by himself, how could he know in advance whether the term rep report means order in this case specific case or time? And by experience, I can tell you that we have many issues around it. Let's look in, in another example, and this is about the style. I learned lately that there is different style when it comes to Japanese, where, where the label is related to a checkbox or just a regular label. So the translation would be never be able to guess by looking into the bundle itself, whether it's related to the checkbox or not, and if he would have the, the context, it can, he can uh, supply better translation from day one rather than go through a, a long process of verification, a, a QA, finding those, those issues and fixing all those uh, roundtable taking too much time. Another aspect, we are today, we are in many of the cases, when something is not very clear to our translators, we are receiving questions from, from them. In some cases, we are, we in our group, we are able to, to answer them directly. And in some other cases, we need to send those questions to the product team themselves to answer. And it takes the time to gather the, the information and supply them back to the translators. In all those times, it, it delays the whole process, and until we have a full translation, it, it takes more time. If we would uh, supply the trans context to the translators, we can save uh, uh, many of those questions in advance. Like, look at this specific case. When you have a parameter in the stri strings, which is very co a very recommended approach, but it's not always clear what the meaning of those parameters, what kind of it, it, it should be replaced. And once you see the application and the full context, it helps you to understand the full strings you need to, to translate and save the need for a query. Looking on our linguistic defect distribution at, at, at some point, we found out, and quite surprising, that context defects are actually around 50% of all our linguistic defects. Better the, the, the defects are related to better translation or wrong translations. I believed that if I would supply in advance context to, to the translators, we can save all many of those defects in advance. And the big question is, how can we supply context to the translators in advance? And the, would we go to continue with a, 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 with a demo? You know that usually when you see a, a, a bundle you see in English, and, I, and we are using here a Pasolo. The translator see only the, the, the bundle itself without any, anything. Together with, with Hank, which help us supplying with, with the, the solution called Eriki, we're able to do the following. To supply context, application context to the translators. In this case, this is the Japanese applica application of one of HPE product called Storm Runners. The translator, in this what we called is we called it a kind of online mode, meaning once you, the translators is have access to the application, and it's very relevant where your translator is in house, or you have you have on it on the cloud, the application in the cloud, you can give him access or any other situation like that. He can translate everything on the fly. This application is mostly already translated, but let's assume that we, I have a, a situation that I, I have a new, a new 
a button in the application, but rather by a click on, on right click on it, I can go directly to the uh, 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 to the key and do the translation. So since my Japanese is not uh, uh, that good, let's I can do some 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 text over here, and automatically you will see in advance the impact of uh, translating. So let's assume that I have a very long, very long translation. I can see in advance the impact of that strings on the application. And that is very helpful. <clears throat> more, more than that, I can go, navigate through the application. This is really application. And every time I have something that I need to translate, I can do it right, right away. I have the scheduler, right click, and I found the key that I need, I need to, to, to translate. More than that, I, even for tooltips, I can put right click on it and get into the, uh, uh, the right thing that needs to be translate, translated as well. So that way, translators can go through, navigate through the old application, translate everything, and do that, and do that. So I show you how it looks like with the application which is mostly translated. But look, I add Brazilian Portuguese as a, as a new language to the product. Nothing is, at the moment, is translated to the, to the uh, Brazilian Portuguese, and that way, Translators can go label by label, translate everything, and once he's happy with translation, move on to the next to the next uh, 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 view as he needed. You might you might ask that in many of the cases, translators do not have access to the real application. How? how we can, we can use the, the solutions. And in matter of the cases, in HPE, we are not using the online, the online mode in most of the cases. And there is an option to do offline mode with a screenshot that was pre-taken pre, pre before, before in the team. And let's show you an, exa an example. I can move to the review mode and I can go I could can navigate through the screenshots which are actually not a, 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 a static image is actually a real a HTML file I can do the same trick that I did as it did before I can do over here do the translation although it's a static it's in HTML, and I can do the, have the same F effect as I showed you before with live application. So the working model that we are actually using uh, uh, with our uh, in, uh, in HPE, we, every time before preparing preparing the bundle for translation for translation, someone taking several uh, the screenshots of the new area that were uh, uh, changed and updated, and together with the bundle, we are sending those screenshots to the translators, and they can see everything locally on their machines. He can navigate everything, uh, uh, once he has the translations, uh, 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 he can continue. Be aware, this working model is more effective for pure UI, but what I call, I call pure UI that you can navigate through, but at least in HP, I'm not bothering to go through all the error situation to cap, and I'm not capturing a, 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 a images or screenshots for error or, or a, a warning messages. And for th those area or those strings, we are doing them in the old way on pure. That means once the translator finish with the screenshot and everything is being translated there, he can he can uh, uh, go through the bundle itself, 
notify what is not being translated yet and complete that uh, 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 to reach everything to be. The process of taking screenshots is very simple. There is an applica application dedicated for, for that. You are, you are navigating the application and once you would like to take a, a screenshots, just press F7 and you can capture the screenshots. Nothing too much effort for that. For lo looking at what we, about the ROI we received from the, the solution, we notified that overall, from specific this is again data from a specific product called Service Anywhere, SEW, we, we notified that the overall number of errors was reduced by 30%, and the impact was saving a lot of our time around that. In this point, I would like to involve Hank, the developer and inventor of the Regi solution. Hank, please. Yes, thank you, uh, Uriel. And, um, well, I have to give some credits to my uh, partner, Christopher, because uh, so he's also in, involved in, in our startup. And um, so I, I would like to give you a short intermezzo to explain you a bit more um, about this idea. So what Uriel uh, just showed you was uh, the concept of localizing dynamic applications in context. And this is actually something I was, you know, breaking my, my head on, as we say in Holland. Um, so I was thinking a, a long time, you know, how could we solve this problem? Because in 2009, um, I wrote an article in Multilingual. And uh, in this article, I described that what I noticed was that many people, many companies were focusing on, you know, how to reduce the translation costs, so what they pay to their translation vendors. They were really focusing on that. While my experience as an engineer was that the majority of localization costs was actually internal. So it was the testing, um, all answering these questions, just what Uriel uh, just explained to you. And um, one of the first things that I identified was that a lack of context is one of the main root causes that these costs are so high. And as Uriel just confirmed, uh, at HP we, we have 50% uh, of the reported errors are due a lack of context. So this is uh, enormous. So, um, so what I started to do uh, is I started to do all kinds of assignments in the industry, working at uh, my, my larger, at larger corporates, doing all kinds of uh, assignments. And during these assignments, uh, I developed the concept of Rigi. And if you go to the next slide, please, uh, Uriel. So, so with Rigi, what we wanted to do, so what my clients, they develop all kinds of applications. They develop web applications, but also uh, desktop applications like WPF. Some clients use Silverlight, many clients have apps, but all have the same problem. They all need context when they do their translations. And this is why, why we developed Rigi. And we developed it in such a way that it's really easy to install and use. You don't have to modify your code. It really fits into the processes that your developers use, but it also connects to your existing localization tools. So you don't need, you know, to change everything because this was one of my experiences. People don't like it when, you know, to change everything. You you want to connect to your existing environment. So one of the goals, what we, what I try to accomplish is I wanted to reduce the number of dependencies between the development organizations and the localization environments. And this is how we came up with Rigi. And, and one of the things is, the key in all this is context. And if you go to the next slide, please, um, Uriel. So just to recap what Uriel just showed you. So the first implementation that we had is, is usually at development, you have a kind of staging server where your web application runs. So what we could do is we could connect to that staging server and then localize in context. And this is already great because you, you can navigate over the application, translate everything in context. So that's, that's really cool. But there are some major disadvantages. Because what happens if the staging server goes down? 
or if the staging server is not performant. And I know that Uriel had this issue because um, their staging servers are uh, in China, I think. Many of them are in China. And sometimes the performance is not that good. So you cannot really rely on that. And also the, the thing is when um, developers need uh, add new features, they need to provide a description to the translators how to get to those features. And um, what also is a, a thing for many of my clients is that they do, they do not want to provide access to their live environment outside the company. So there are all kinds of drawbacks, but at least it's, it's a very good start. So, but what we did is we came up with the concept of screenshots. So if you please go to the next slide, Uriel. So actually what we do is we, we are able to take screenshots using this application that uh, Uriel just showed you. It's basically a browser and using this browser we can take the screenshots which are stored and um, those screenshots are great because you can, well, they're quite easy to distribute. Um, they're always available even if you're staging, so you're not dependent on your staging server anymore and one of the really cool things is that translators, they are usually paid per word. So what translators want to do is they want to select a string and then immediately get a preview. They don't want to navigate through the all, through all application. And because all our screenshots are indexed, because it's not a simple bitmap, but it's really an indexed HTML page. And with indexed we mean that we exactly know which strings are on which page page and we know those strings by their identifier so we know exactly from which resource files they come from which resix files or properties files or JSON files whatsoever we know exactly where they come from and exactly where they appear on the screen so we can do, do a really ID based localization so but as you may have seen in the in the demo that Uriel provided he has about 10% uh, for this particular application in context and if you have a huge application and, and some of my clients uh, they have huge applications with, with 80, 90,000 strings or so this man, it, it's a lot of manual effort to generate those screens so and here is where we came up with another solution so Uriel so as you may um, know that uh, within development um, a lot of automated testing is done and, and what we were thinking about is, okay, can we take advantage of those processes and those systems that are already in place and create the kind of screenshots as a kind of byproduct? So actually what we did is we integrated Rigi within the development organization, within the automated UI testing, and by this we were able to generate those screenshots as byproduct. And we then could load them in the translation tool. And this is of course really cool. You have, of course, a disadvantage because you need to do something within your automated testing environment to create those screenshots. But if you see what the value is, if you can reduce your contextual uh, errors even more, then uh, I think it, the ROI is uh, pretty simple to calculate. So then as a next step, um, even after this, because we, we are continuously uh, developing um, uh, new solutions. So Uriel, if you can show the last slide of my part. Please. Yeah. So so one of the things is how to distribute those screenshots because if you have a very large application and you have, I don't know, thousands of screenshots, it can be quite many, it might be quite, uh, well, a challenge to distribute them. It may become more difficult. So what we developed recently is uh, a Rigi server, how we call it. And by this development, they can connect the development environment to our server and they automatically upload uh, all the previews that they create. And we even go a, a step further. Uh, we even can connect it to their version control system so that we can keep the translations automatically in sync between development and Rigi. But that's something uh, out of scope for this session. Um, then what we do is we the translation tools, they have a connection to our Rigi server so a translator first needs to log in because you cannot give everybody you know immediately uh, uh, 
um, yeah, you cannot let everybody uh, give access to all the screenshots that are available there. Somebody needs to authenticate uh, himself. But when he does that, he can do exactly the same that Uriel was just showing you. And another thing is what we recently implemented is we provided a solution for proofreading. So by this, the proofreader uh, is not forced to use the translation tool. So in case at uh, HP, um, they are using Pasolo, as Uriel explained. But in many cases, the proofreaders, they, they are not aware of those tools. So what they can do is instead they can uh, log into the browser and then do the proofreading within that browser environment. So and now Uriel can go further. This was my Thank part, uh, Uriel. So maybe, I don't know if you want to add something to this? Maybe? Okay. Our time is, is limited, so I, I will cont continue, and in the, if we will have some spare time, we can speak more about that. So talking about our QA uh, uh, methodology, and the challenges here by, around QA is very, is very uh, clear. We have many languages where many languages, the, the number of big product we need to, co to cover for all those languages and in the same time need to be agile to and receive SIMship. So uh, uh, what we implementing the new, this new working model, we will be able to reduce uh, uh, the number, number of teams in, internally in some product, product unit and increase the satisfaction and professionalism of our internal resources. I must mention that we are doing QA in-house within HP and not externally. So where, where I, there are four areas that need to be, that we focus, put focus in order to improve it. It starts it start with the planning and what in the coverage we, we need we look at. So we looked in his around history about the market, the defect we had, and uh, uh, which language we have more defects, and which area of the product we have more more defects, and which languages are more used by customers, and Based on that, we build more optimized testing plan that we covered on that rather than testing everything on every uh, platform, on every language, which is something not very realistic with the time and resources limitation. So optimize the test plan is step one. About coding. We did some improvement with impl implementing some static code analysis approach, and we started with the ability to detect hard-coded issues in advance. So the, you can see that using that, this approach, we were able to reduce overall defects, and those were that was found will uh, get mo much more uh, a fixed rate uh, uh, using this approach. Static analysis means that before every build, and sometimes even before commit a change by the developers, they run this static analysis tools we built in-house and fix those issues that were uh, uh, detected. And as soon as you are finding all those defects in advance, sometimes really in the development part, it's much easier to fix it rather than finding those defects weeks or days after the development. The verification time in that, in that, uh, using that is very immediate and saving time as well. Talking about the, ne the next stage and about the deployment of the build. We are having for all of, all of our applications, we have automatic deployment systems. So even if our 
uh, uh, development team are in, in US or U United Kingdom and our, in our testers are in, in China, during the night we have a process that taking the, the latest build and deploying and install it on our local machines that, and, and in a click and in sometimes those tasks are being scheduled in advance and once the engineers come in, in the morning they are having environment for them with a new build ready starting of the testing. That saves a lot of time for them. And talking about the testing itself, which is the most time consuming. And the issue around testing is very clear. You need to test so many languages in so much short time. The easier way to do all that is by using automation. However, in order to be effective for globalization issues, you must have GUI-based testing rather than API testing. And even that is not always easy to leverage uh, automation that's being developed uh, 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 for the product team and use it for localization testing. I can tell you from my own experience that it's, at some point we tried to develop GUI by testing in-house in within our group and it's a big pain because maintenance of GUI testing is, is time consuming. So instead of that, we are more collaborative today with the product team themselves and we are expecting them to develop GUI based testing which is ready for localization. And what that means to be ready for localization is that I can run those automation on non-English environment. And let's say that you are using Selenium or, or any other uh, technology for automation testing. The identification of object that I would like to cl uh, click, a, click the button or select a list, you must set uh, uh, the selection of the object to be non-sensitive on the object label and identify the object by other ways. It's important that all the user activities, input and output, will be taken from external from the test and so you can test aspect of INTN in that way. And for us in globalization, it's not enough that the functionality of the test passed okay. We need to make sure that the layout looks okay, that the daytime is being present properly. And for all that, it's important to, to add checkpoint for globalization to check that in advance. In addition to that, we are taking along the running of the automation, we are taking screenshots of the application and those screenshots being reviewed manually to make sure the layout of the application looks okay. So definitely my, my best recommendation is to use automation testing. The big problem is automation that automation is not always ready, uh, uh, ready in time for us. And we have found ourselves in many of the cases using automation for the regression area and we are still having to test manually uh, the, the new features. And for that we came with a new solution we called, called, called globalization mirror testing. And the approach means the following, that the tester is running on his own machine, which sometimes might be even pure English machine. And whatever application he will do will automatically be, will be duplicated on several others local in parallel. So the, test, the tester can have a big monitors or even more than one, and he can open a, a, a view of several several locales in parallel and that way to check a, a run four or five or six different locales in parallel 
every, after every check, see the quality, and if needed, uh, uh, log a defect. Let me show you a, a, a short summary that I capture for a, a lo different locale on one screen. The tester in this case is you running only on English, and automatically every activity that he will do on his own machine will be duplicated to the other locales in parallel. Since the test itself is very manual driven, there is no maintenance like you have today with automation testing. More than that, at any point you can stop and check what's the quality of other locales and do some issues. If, for example, there is some unexpected pop-up, you can switch to that, that other uh, locale, do whatever needs to be, to, to be fixed, uh, uh, log a defect, and continue uh, uh, back, uh, continue do the testing for all the locale in parallel. So this is the, the concept of this, uh, uh, this, 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 this testing. Using this approach, it saves us at least 40% of testing time. And again, I'm, I'm emphasize it's coming when I have to use manual testing. Of course, automation is, is sometimes even better. You can run the whole 20, 20 different locales in parallel. But whenever you have to do testing manually, using this approach is very efficient. I'm relying here on this solution about internal tool that we built in our group. So talking about the solution ROI, in talking about saving 40% of testing, and the tool itself allows you to take screenshots, and those screenshots are being used for linguistic verification later, later on. And instead of doing the effort of screenshots capturing per locale, doing that, we are taking uh, uh, screenshots in multiple uh, uh, locales in parallel. We are running almost uh, uh, to the end of the time, and I would like to uh, leave a few minutes for Q&A. So David, please. Amazing. I, uh, I was, uh, I was very impressed, uh, as I knew I would be, and uh, I think that uh, the first thing I want to say before we go to the Q and A is just that uh, everyone should uh, keep uh, uh, keep their emails tuned to uh, to our uh, uh, educational blast, so you could see uh, what the next uh, webinar is going to be. Uh, we should be having one in another six or eight weeks. Um, I want to thank uh, I want to thank Loriel and Hank uh, for their for their time and for their extremely interesting presentation. And uh, I think we'd like to go to some uh, questions and answers now. Uh, Chris, do you have uh, do you have questions there that uh, that have been asked during the uh, the presentation? Yes, let me get started here. A uh, couple of questions. Let me see. Uriel, earlier, uh, you got an abbreviation BI. Somebody had a question what that means. Does that make sense? It was sort of like in the earlier part of the presentation. BI. BI is business information. Okay, great. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. Then another question. What does Delta text mean? Delta text. Text, it means that between different bundles, we are focusing about the new things only, and you can focus them only on the new areas that were being added to the application in the last iterations. Okay, and we're getting a lot of questions now in. Please keep on submitting them. We're probably not going to get to all of them, uh, but maybe we can have a follow up webinar uh, at some point. Um, let's see. Um, Uriel, do you have internal translation teams? No, all of our translations are being done by external vendors. We are actually working with four different vendors, uh, uh, cons considering that we have uh, 12, uh, 20, up to 20 uh, uh, different languages. So we are not doing everything uh, uh, in-house, 
the translation itself is being outsourced. Totally. Okay, excellent. Then let me see question. I would like to know if it's uh, good to get after each sprint of agile development or should uh, it be consolidated uh, two or three sprints uh, together? Same for localization testing schedule question mark. The, the answer is that we're trying to be very aligned with product team. When back then, when we worked, I won't let's say waterfall model, but even if semi-agile, we found out that many of the defects were not fixed in time. Sometimes they were postponed to the next version as long as there was not critical defect. And the, one of the main causes for that, that the, the defect were found quite late in quite late, the product team moves on to the next features and they don't have enough time in the stabilization period to fix everything. Sometimes it was too risky to do those changes. So I believe that as soon as you found the defect earlier, it bets chance to fix them in advance. Excellent, excellent. Quick question for Hank. Uh, does Rigi require any specific web technologies to work? Um, well, in short, no. It's, uh, so it works with all client-server uh, side web technologies and uh, we also do not require any code change. So Excellent. it really works within the environment that you already have. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, did you say you were using machine translation on software applications or that you were just investigating it, Uriel? We are starting using machine translations for very few languages already, but we are in the process to extend it uh, uh, to additional lang languages. Uh, again, as you know, with machine translation, some languages are quite straightforward and some of them are more challenging. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me see. Uh, when you provide automated, uh, created screenshots to a translation company, you also need to provide steps to reach to those UI. Is that done automatically somehow? Can I answer that? Yeah. Please go yes. Yeah. Because what we what we do is, um, as I mentioned, is all those screenshots are indexed, so we know exactly which strings are shown on which screenshots. So it means that if the translator selects a random string which has a unique identifier, then we know exactly on which screenshot it is. So it can immediately connect to the right screenshot and show it instantly. Awesome. Awesome. Let me see. Um, okay. Hasn't the solution for in-context localization impacted the terminology consistency in any way? Question mark. Can translators still reference the translation memories? And please. Uh, I can do that, yeah. Um, so can they still reference the translation memories? Yes. Um, th there is, by the way, with um, software localization, there's one key concept, which is called ID-based localization. And this is the reason that uh, at Hewlett Packard, uh, they use a software localization tool, Persolo, because they're um, unlike you do with translation memory systems, you need to do a kind of pre-translation, which is fully based on the translation memory. Whereas with uh, HP, what they do is they do an update and they immediately see only the changes. And then when you get the new strings, of course you can use uh, translation memories to find the matches. Yes. So, so the answer is yes, you can still Thanks. do that. Cool. Uh, what's the file type that uh, is being sent to the translators? The file type. So, 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 so Ricky again, support. Oh, sorry, please. you can do it as well, Uriel. No, no. So, so, so for the, there is no change with what being be, by using Ricky. I'm sending the uh, the bundle as we used to do uh, before having Ricky in place. The only change that, in addition to the standard bundle, I'm sending today a, a, a bucket of screenshots uh, as well that uh, related to that bundle uh, and that's, that's it. The bundle and the file format and all that is the same as it used to be. 
Awesome. So we're actually at the top of the hour. I'm going to combine two questions from Dipinder. Um, what tool do you use to simultaneously run on multiple locales? When you click on English, it works on other locales, question mark. And then uh, how many uh, typically, what's the number of drops do you have in any release? So for the second question, again, it depends on the life cycle of the release, whether we are talking about a major release, minor, or a minor, minor. Uh, uh, we are usually sending a bundle every two weeks, every iterations. So the answer is actually based on the, the life cycle of uh, the product. Some In some product, we have more than 10, uh, 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 10 different uh, uh, bundles, while in some cases we are having very few bundles. As about the first questions, the tool for duplicating uh, uh, the local and uh, in, in testing activities, it's in-house tool that was built in, within our group. Uh, it was based on HP technology. HP itself developed testing tools like HP a UFT functional testing suite, and we are leveraging some technology and build on top of that dedicated solution for globalization. Awesome. Okay. So unfortunately, and I apologize, we don't have time for all the questions. Ready? A couple of minute, minute overs, but people are asking for more information about Rigi, etc. So we'll send a follow up email with uh, the link to the recording as well to the contact information of Hank. Hank, are you okay if we share your contact information? Yes, but please do, and and people can contact me directly with their questions, and I'll be happy to to uh, to answer them. Okay, why don't we conclude? Same with, oh, with so me, feel free to share my email, and I will be ha happy to answer questions. Excellent. Let's uh, conclude with a word from the vendor, which is David, from the tools provider, which is Hank, and from the customer side. Uh, why don't we, um, Uriel? One last conclusion here, tip or anything? Again, I believe that globalization domain is very interesting area, is that the working model can be become very, uh, 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 very dynamic and you can do wonderful things and reach very good qualities. Awesome. Hank? Yes, a final word. Well, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, that, that our solution um, works with uh, HP on, on so many different uh, applications and um, we, we worked uh, quite intensively together you know to, to make improvements and and yeah I, I really hope that we can continue working this way awesome and David before I hand it over to you I would like to thank uh, and especially also net translators for hosting and these sessions they're super educational people love them we get a lot of people signed up uh, that said uh, David you're gonna have the last word Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, as a vendor, I um, I look at these types of solutions as sort of, uh, you know, a dream come true. Uh, finally, there are customers who understand that uh, there are um, places in the process that can be improved and the value of, uh, of these improvements um, in, in terms of uh, streamlining their own activities as well as uh, saving uh, on their budgets so it's uh, it's always uh, it's always good to hear these awesome absolutely this was an awesome presentation thank you so much uh, David let's uh, stop the recording and then uh, you know hopefully we'll see everybody soon again in one of these upcoming webinars thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day all right thanks guys thanks so much thank you thank you everybody Bye -bye.